In today's video, we're going to be diving into the world of Bloxburg and taking a look at this Bloxburg iceberg, going from the very popular known facts about the game all the way down to the most unknown parts of Bloxburg and its community. Hey Glossettes, welcome back. How are you guys doing today? Tell me down below as usual. Now you heard the intro. In today's video, we're going to be going over the Bloxburg Iceberg, which is this thing right here. If you don't know what an iceberg chart is, then they're a form of information chart that looks something like this, made over the top of an image of an iceberg. And they have different sections starting from the tip of the iceberg to the bottom. People make these based on games, movies, and more. And how it works is you put the well-known facts at the top. And as you get further and further down, the facts and information get more unknown until you reach the bottom which has the most unknown information about that topic. I think that makes sense. Lots of people make these for all sorts of different things and I finally decided to make a Bloxburg one so yes for the record I did make all of this myself and I'm going to be going over every single topic in each of the sections on the iceberg for you guys. I tried to include as much as possible as well as hopefully a lot of facts towards the bottom that some of you don't actually know. This iceberg will be split into three video parts because of how insanely long the footage is so this is part one which will cover the first two sections of the iceberg. Part 2 and 3 will be coming as soon as physically possible, so subscribe to stay up to date for those, and as soon as they're posted, they'll also be linked in the description, as well as the pinned comment on this video, just so you can find them a bit more easily. A few disclaimers before we start, once again, this iceberg was made by me, completely by myself, this was my own idea, so please give credits and link the video if you decide to share the image anywhere. All of the information used in this video is public knowledge, and has been gathered from my own experiences, the Bloxburg Wikipedia site, or social media. Anyone whose footage or pictures I've used in this video has have been credited on screen when it's shown and will also be linked down below in the description if you'd like to go and check it out yourselves. And finally, I'm currently filming this in early April of 2024, but because Bloxburg has so many updates, there will be a time when the stuff in this video is no longer accurate. But if anything becomes inaccurate or there's any facts I got wrong, I will correct them in the pinned comments, so let me know if anything needs to be mentioned there. But without further ado, it's time to get into the first two sections of the Bloxburg Iceberg, starting with level 1 at the tip of the iceberg. Tom. You know this guy on all of the Bloxburg icons? That is Tom. Tom is an NPC inside of Bloxburg and is also pretty much the mascot of the game as well as the mayor of the town. When you play the game for the first time, Tom will actually stand outside of your plot for a while and you can go up and speak to him. Tom will tell you a little bit about the game and how to play it and it's pretty helpful for new players. According to Bloxburg Wiki, he will leave after a real life week or after you play the game a few times, but we don't actually have a specific amount of time that he'll stand there for. He just kind of chills in front of your house for a while. But this is isn't the only time you can see Tom in game. In the annual Christmas update, Tom appears again at his tree farm near the town hall where he will sell you Christmas trees and other Christmas treats. He's also in a band called Tom and the Beat Builders who perform at the Plenty of Pumpkins Farm and Orchard during the Halloween update. And for the first time last year in 2023, we saw Tom and his band once again for the Bloxburg Summer Festival kind of little area. Some other fun Tom lore is that some community members commonly refer to Tom as a stalker due to the fact that when you first play the game, it does slightly look like he's looking through the windows a little bit. You can also see Tom on things like the mood pop-up when your moods are low and in general sometimes you just see him on little things throughout the game. Tom has brown hair and he wears a white t-shirt with his classic blue and grey hoodie and black jeans with black shoes as well as the joyous surprise face. Starter houses. When you play Bloxburg for the first time or you buy a new plot you'll be taken to the creator house page where you can pick either an empty plot or you can choose a starter house. There's six starter houses in total as of right now these being the happy home of Robloxia, Cozy Cottage, Peaceful Living, Classic Family Home, Small Suburban, and the Bloxington Mansion. Now these houses all cost different amounts of money, but if you're a new player, you can actually get the Happy Home of Robloxia for free for your first house. And this house is actually seen as the official starter home of the game by a lot of people, as this is pretty much what all players start off with, unless they decide to buy Bloxburg money with Robux and start off with a better house. We did actually used to have an old starter house, but that got removed a few years ago, and I will be talking about that later down the line in the iceberg. And adding on to this, Bloxburg did release a video a week or so ago where they did confirm we are getting a new in-game kind of house catalog, which means we're going to have more houses to choose from, so soon these houses won't actually be the only ones you can buy in-game. Town. The Bloxburg map consists of two housing areas referred to as Riverside Estates and Bloxy Acres. In the middle of the map, we actually have the main town. This consists of Bloxburger, Green Clean Janitorial Services, Styles Hair Studio, BFF Supermarket, Bloxburg Gym, Bloxburg City Hall, Beat Nightclub, Fancy Furniture, Pizza Planet, and Mike's Motors. 
There's also a pretty pathway that goes down the middle of the town with trees and benches, a gas station area next to Mike's Motors, a multi-story car park, and if you follow this long road down from the town, there's also a beach area. And this has a Ferris wheel, the Fisherman's Hut, Ben's ice cream store, and a large kind of beach area, which was actually revamped last year. There's a few other buildings and areas around the map, but that's pretty much it for the main town in the middle, Coeptus. Coeptus, or Coeptus as I usually pronounce it, is the creator of Bloxburg and was the owner of the game up until a couple years years ago in 2022 when Bloxburg was actually bought. Coeptus continued to own the actual game inside of Roblox until October 18th, 2023 when Bloxburg's ownership was finally passed on to the Bloxburg Development Roblox Group. He created his Roblox account on the 28th of May 2014 and started development on Bloxburg the same year, before releasing the game to the public under paid access in 2016. He also has a Twitter that was created in July of 2016 but remains pretty inactive now, however he used to retweet a lot of players' builds and interact with the community quite a bit before the game was sold. For a long time, Coeptus was the only developer, but slowly a few more devs did help with the game's development, and his true identity has always remained a secret, and not much is known about Coeptus himself, but he's most recognisable by his classic noob-themed avatar, which can also be spotted on some default decals around the game. Coeptus himself is honestly a really nice guy from what I and many other players have experienced, and I've had the pleasure of meeting him in-game a few times. He's a super cool dude. Currencies. In Bloxburg, there are two different currencies. The main one is just called money or Bloxburg cash as a lot of people refer to it, and it uses the dollar symbol as well as being a green dollar. Most items, foods, and features in the game that you need to pay for will use this currency like most of the build items, all food purchases, paying bills, planting plants, donating to other players, and more. When you work in the game, this is also what you'll be paid in, but money is also obtainable from certain events like the elf hunt, buying it with Robux in the shop, the first four days of your daily rewards, leveling up on certain jobs and skills, and many more small ways in game that you will be rewarded with money for. However, we also have a second currency called Bloxbucks, and this uses a B, then the dollar symbol, as well as being a purple dollar. Bloxbucks is a more rare form of currency in the game, and you can use this to buy more exclusive items like certain vehicles and build mode items, buying extra outfit slots in the character customization menu, buying more house slots or plots as they're commonly called, boosting your moods, fertilizing plants, and buying the color wheel plus extra color save slot palettes. You don't get this currency from working in-game, you can only get this from either the daily reward system, where you'll get 20 Bloxbugs every 5 days, or 40 if you have premium, buying it with the Robux from the Bloxbug shop, getting certain trophies like from the end of the elf hunt, or leveling up on certain jobs. Which leads us on to our next category, jobs. In Bloxburg, there are 12 different jobs you can currently do to earn in-game money, and in no particular order, these are Fast Food Worker at Bloxburgers, where you can take orders and make food, a janitor at Green Clean, where you can go around the area nearby and clean up trash and graffiti, hairdresser at Styles Hair Salon, where you give people new hairdos, stocker at BFF Supermarket, where you stock up the shelves, cashier at BFF Supermarket, where you serve customers and pack up their groceries, pizza baker at Pizza Planet, where you of course make pizza orders, delivery person at Pizza Planet, where you can pick up pizzas and deliver them around the map to NPCs, mechanic at Mike's Motors where you fix up bikes, fisherman at the fishing hut where you fish in the sea, seller at Ben's Ice Cream where you make the ice cream orders, lumberjack at Lovely Lumber where you cut down trees, and finally a miner at the Bloxburg Cave where you mine for ores. Each job has its own individual level system and you can reach a max of level 50 on each individual job by filling up the XP bar and getting promoted. You'll earn more money for being on a higher level. There's also a main job level that was added last year and that is for all jobs where you can reach a max of level 100 overall, and this will go up by working on any job. When you reach level 50 on the individual jobs, you'll get a plaque or a trophy for it, and when you reach level 100 on the main job level, you'll get this work experience trophy, as well as the fact you'll get a certain amount of Bloxburg cash for each level you hit, which gets higher and higher each time. Bloxburg is also in the process of revamping all the job systems, so the only new one we have so far is for the fast food worker job, where you can actually see your work efficiency, and this will go up and down depending on your in-game mood and how efficient you are at working. So if you're just stood still, it'll go down, but if you're working, it will go up. And for this individual job, you'll also get rewards for each level, which are either blocks by cash or items themed around the job that you can unlock in build mode. You'll also get a different looking trophy for hitting level 50 than the other jobs, which looks like this. We can expect to see every job will be revamped at one point, hopefully this year, and they'll also have the efficiency, the rewards for each level, and a new trophy. The devs have also confirmed that at some point all the jobs will be edited so that they make the same amount of money, which means you don't have to choose which job will give you the most money, and you can just pick them based on which one you find the most entertaining to do. Moods. 
Now you may have heard me briefly mention moods in the job section, so let me explain what this actually means. In Bloxburg, you have four moods, which are fun, energy, hunger, and hygiene. You can keep track of your mood levels by clicking this bar at the top of your screen and it should open this little menu, or you can find this by clicking the little person icon and clicking mood. Your mood will always be in between 0 and 100% and they do actually have in-game effects. The most important effect they have is that you'll get more money from jobs if your moods are higher. So if your moods were all at 100%, you'll make more money than if you had them at like 10%. Energy and hygiene also have physical effects on your avatar. So if your energy is low, you'll look down and walk slowly as if you're tired. And if your hygiene is low, then this green stink will appear around you with some flies. But fun and hunger don't physically do anything to you. Moods can be increased by doing certain things and if if you hover over each bar, it'll actually tell you underneath what you can do to increase each one. The basic things you can do are watch TV or read a book to increase fun, sleep or drink coffee to increase energy, eat some food to increase hunger, and shower or bathe to increase your hygiene. But most things you can interact with in the game will affect your mood in some way. The bar at the top is also helpful to tell you what you need, so as you can see, I'm hungry right now. And you can boost your mood all the way to 100% with 25 blocks bugs if you really need to fill them up quickly. And when you do this, you also get a 2 minute period where your moods won't go down at all. Which is super helpful if you're working and you just can't be bothered to go and fix your moods, so you can just boost them quickly. Age Morphs Age Morphs is a feature in Bloxburg where you can change the size of your avatar to be in different age categories. To do this, you need to find any wardrobe, clothing rail, or set of drawers, and then you can click on it and go into the customized character menu. At the top of this menu, you should see this bar here, and by dragging this along, you can either be an adult, teen, kid, toddler, or baby. Adult, teen, and kid are all the same, except they're different sizes, so the adult one is kind of like a normal avatar height, the teen one is slightly smaller, and then the kid one is pretty small, obviously to represent the size of a kid but the toddler morph actually has a different walking style to mimic that of a toddler as well as being even smaller than the kid morph and then the baby morph which is the tiniest will make you crawl around instead of walking like a baby. Game Passes Bloxburg currently has 8 different game passes which allow you to access a lot more features in the game. First up, we have Excellent Employee, which doubles your earnings when working as well as doubling the XP you get, meaning you get promoted and level up twice as fast and this costs 300 Robux. Then we have Premium, which halves your bills, doubles your daily reward amount, gives you a special name tag, increases your donation limit, and lets you choose where your plot spawns on the map out of the 12 plot spaces, and this costs 400 Robux. Next is Multiple Floors, and this allows you to build on more than one floor with the limit being up to 5, and this costs 300 Robux. Then there's Advanced Placing, which allows you to do a lot more in build mode, like not restricting your item placement and allowing you to place items literally anywhere, including inside other items, as well as allowing you to resize items, and this costs 200 Robux. Next up is a large plot, which increases your plot size to 50 times 50, allowing you to build in a larger space, and this costs 250 Robux. Next is basements, which allows you to build basements under the ground, and this costs 100 Robux. Then we have marvelous moods, which makes your mood stay higher for a lot longer, as well as giving you the option to toggle off mood effects, like the hygiene smell effect or the slow energy effect, and this costs 180 Robux. And finally, we have the transform plus game pass, and this allows you to move and rotate basic shapes and structural pieces with literally no restriction, so you can put stuff in the air, you can move it and rotate it to however you want, and you can also use this on most items in the game by placing them on top of a basic shape like this and then transforming the basic shape underneath so that the object moves along with it. And this game pass costs 600 Robux. Community Managers Bloxburg actually currently has two community managers who run their social media and create content and teasers for the game. They are Marie and Bramp who have been the official community managers since April 2023. Bramp has actually helped with the game's development for a while now and he's also a Bloxburg YouTuber himself. He has a channel called Bramp as well as a Twitter page and Marie also has a Twitter page as well as her own YouTube channel where she also now posts Roblox content. Both of the community managers are really lovely and helpful and in my opinion are a great fit for the Bloxburg community. School. School refers to the fact that a huge chunk of the Bloxburg community wants a school to be added to the game. It's something the community's been asking for for years now, and a lot of people either make their own schools on their plot to use, or they simply drop their roleplay kids off at the town hall, and that's kind of where players go to pretend it's a school, and they just stand there doing nothing all day, basically. This got so well known as a sort of meme that for the 2022 April Fools update, they actually added a fake school inside the town hall, complete with a school bus outside, and after this update was removed, they did actually add a nice library area in its place, which now gives role players a space to pretend it's a school a little bit more realistically. However, there's still no actual school building in games, so we'll just have to wait and see if we ever do get that Bloxburg school that everyone seems to be dreaming of. 
updates. Bloxburg, like most games, has updates, and these are usually once a month, and at the moment, they're mostly on a Thursday, but of course, that sometimes changes. You can keep up to date with the updates and see what was added by clicking the update logs button on the menu page, and there's also a number in the top right of the screen which shows the current update version of the server that you're in. Perms. Perms is short for permissions, and in Bloxburg, there is a bunch of different levels of permissions you can give other players, which allows them to do certain things on your plot. The first permission is non, which means they can't do anything on your plot, except walk around it. Then we have a block permission, which means they can't even go on your plot, and they'll be blocked by this big boundary similar to the build mode boundary. Apart from that, there's four more permissions you can give people that I'm gonna go over. Now, there was recently an update with permissions, meaning now you can control every single little feature, but the four permissions are guest, custom, roommate, and co-owner. To see your permission settings, click on the house icon, and then permissions and family, and then settings at the bottom, and this is where you can control all of the permissions. At the top here, you can pick which permission you want to edit and then there's a list of all the controls you can toggle on or off. Now both guest and custom have the same list of permissions you can have and guest is usually the lowest set of permissions so it doesn't give people access to everything but because they updated it to let you control it you can now pick what you want people to be able to do for all of the permissions so you can set guest and custom to any kind of combination you like and then roommate and co-owner are slightly more powerful if you want them to be so roommate and co-owner both have an added section in the controls which is for build mode. These two permissions allow people to build on your plot if you have it turned on, and it's something that you can't add to the guest or custom permissions. And then co-owner also has an added thing that you can only have with co-owner. If you own a neighborhood and you give someone co-owner in it, they can now use free camp in your neighborhood. So co-owner is basically like the highest permission level possible, but obviously you can go into the settings and turn off and on every function and customize it to how you'd like. To give people permissions, you can either click on them and choose one, or in permissions and family, you can find their name and give them a permission using that menu. You can also choose the the default permission people have for you so everyone will have these permissions and you can choose the default permission for people in your family as well neighborhoods. Now Bloxburg doesn't actually have the basic Roblox private server feature because the Bloxburg version of a private server is called a neighborhood. You can buy these with Robux and there's four different options of a month, three months, six months and a year, all for different Robux amounts. To find neighborhoods you can click the neighborhoods tab on the menu screen and here you can join your own neighborhood, buy a neighborhood or join other people's. It'll show you on this menu here the most recent ones you've been in as well as a join new neighborhood button or leave neighborhood. And to join a new neighborhood you click this button here and then add that neighborhood's code which is usually the neighborhood owner's roblox username. Neighborhood servers are also slightly different to public servers. Public servers have a player limit of 12 but neighborhoods can have up to 75 people in them at once. However there's still only 12 plots so after all the plots have been filled in the server the other players in the game don't actually have a plot but they can still join and play with others they just have to spawn at the neighborhood owner's plot or at the town hall. There's a few different perks with owning a neighborhood and you can control your neighborhood by going into settings and looking at the neighborhood category. Here you can choose what time it is in game or if you want it to be an automatic time cycle, you can choose the weather, you can pick the grass color for the entire map, you can name your neighborhood, you can choose who can join out of everyone, just Roblox friends or no one, you can also pick how many players are allowed in, under allowed players you can add users who can join anytime even if the neighborhood is set to closed, and in block players you can add users who aren't allowed to join at all, and finally if there's people in your neighborhood you can kick them all at once. On top of this, you can also get the in-game feature of free cam. So neighborhoods are pretty useful, especially for events, but overall, they're pretty much just big blocks by private servers. Backpack. The backpack is a feature that was recently added to the game in the 0.12.0 Halloween update of October 2023. If you click on the person icon and then the backpack button, it'll show you a bunch of blocks by items that you can take out of the backpack at any time without needing to pick them up off a plot or somewhere. Lots of them, as you can see, do have locks over them as you do need to pick it up for the first time from somewhere in game but after you've picked something up once it'll unlock in your backpack and you can use it whenever and wherever you like. The update also added this inventory bar at the bottom where you can select multiple items and switch between them and this is a great tool for role players. However the backpack as of right now sometimes does have issues for players where it resets itself and it'll relock all of the items but hopefully this is going to be patched soon. Parties. Parties is a Bloxburg feature which allows you to invite the other players in your server to your plot for a party. It used to just be a button saying throw party 
starting the house tab where you'd click it and it would just invite the entire server. But in the 0.12.3 update, it was completely revamped to be a more detailed menu. So now if you click the button, it will take you to this. You can completely customize your own party invites and make them a lot more personal. You can change the background of the invite here. And then under the event tab, you can choose the purpose for the party. Under the second tab, you can pick a phrase to be displayed on it and also choose a primary and secondary color for the invite. And then you can pick if it gets sent to everyone, just Roblox friends or just Bloxburg family members. And once you're done, you can send it. Build Mode. Build Mode is the name of the building mechanic in Bloxburg. To get into Build Mode, you can click the house icon and then Build Mode, or you can click on your mailbox and click Build Mode. If you're in Build Mode, a huge barrier pops up around your plot so nobody can walk onto it whilst you build, and there's three different item categories you can use to find items to build with. The first one is Build, and this is kind of more the structural parts of building, like walls, doors, fences, windows, fireplaces, wall trims, gardening items, basements, pools, and more. The second category is decorating and this is mainly decorations like appliances, clutter items, picture frames, furniture, electronics, and once again, much, much more. The third category is inventory, and this is where it'll store all the items you have collected. This is normally just seasonal items like Christmas decorations, for example, but it also stores things like bouquets of flowers, trophies, and Bloxburg items as you cannot sell those. Any items that are from a new update will be displayed in the new tab that is in both the build and decorate categories. And if there's currently a seasonal update in the game, for example, the Christmas update, then a new tab titled Special will appear, which displays all of the seasonal items. On the right hand side of the screen, you can see a bunch of features to help you build. The top arrows here allow you to undo or redo actions. Then you have the grid size button where you can set the grid placement to small, medium or large. These up and down arrows control what floor you're on so you can move up and down floors. And then this is the button for the advanced placement game pass. So this shows if advanced placing is off as these lines are solid, meaning you can't place objects inside of each other. And this means it's on so you can and place things using advanced plating as they can go into each other. This house button toggles the roof and floors above the level that you're building on to be on or off. And this button is for the transform tool, so you can click on this to use it, or you can click T on your keyboard and this will toggle it on or off. This sun controls the time in build mode, so you can click on it to adjust the time of day. Then this button here is for bulldozing, and bulldozing is how you can delete everything off your plot at once. Right down here at the bottom of the screen, we have the paint icon, so if you select this, then you can paint things, or you can use the F key on your keyboard. This is the copy and paste button, so if you click this, you can then copy things onto your plot to use again, or you can click C on your keyboard. Then we have the delete button. Once again, press this and it'll allow you to delete things, or you can use the G key on your keyboard. And finally, the X button, which will take you out of build mode. Now, some of this may look slightly different if you're on mobile, but all of the features are still there. It just kind of moved around a bit to fit on different screen sizes. And that's just a bit about how build mode works. Bloxburg Fan Club. Welcome to Bloxburg Fan Club is the name of a Roblox group owned by Copedus for the Bloxburg community. It has over 5 million members, which is insane, and it also has a few different ranks in the group, mainly for more well-known supporters of the game as well as ranks for the group moderation. The group is still used to this day by people talking on the group wall as well as sometimes admins updating the shout of the group every now and then. Builders. Builders refers to the large building community on Bloxburg. Building is a huge part of the game and it allows a lot of people to be insanely creative whether they're making houses, shops, hotels, or other things as crazy as cars, fun fairs, planes, landmarks, roller coasters, giant board games, schools, entire cities, boats, fast food stores, malls. Honestly, whatever you can think of, someone has probably made it in Bloxburg. I could genuinely list things forever. We have so many insanely talented people in the community, and I do suggest you check out Bloxburg builds on social media. There's so many YouTubers who make amazing Bloxburg building content, as well as TikTokers, and a huge Bloxburg community on things like Twitter and Instagram and Reddit and more. Role playing. Just like the building community, I wanted to also mention the Bloxburg role playing community. The game is really popular with role players because of its realistic features as well as the fact you can build pretty much anything you want to role play in. Lots of role players come up with interesting storylines and there's so many popular topics to role play like simple family role plays or things like schools, hospitals, shops, police, mysteries, TV shows. Honestly, once again, I could go on forever. People can be really creative with storylines. People also make role-playing content, so there's loads of Bloxburg YouTubers who make role-playing videos or even movies in the game, as well as on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and more, so if you're interested in stuff like that, make sure once again you go and check them out. Starter Pack. Last but not least for this category, we have the Starter Pack. Similar to Tom, this is something that will show up when you first join the game. It'll usually pop up on screen. The Start Pack is something you can buy in Bloxburg for I think just under 400 Robux, which will give you a bit of a head start in the game by giving 
giving you the Rote 500 car item, 10,000 blocks by cash and 250 blocks bugs. The starter pack is available for the first 24 hours of you playing the game. And that is it for the level 1 of the iceberg. Let me know down below what you think so far and let's move on to level 2. Froggy Hops. Froggy Hops is one of the members of the Bloxburg development team. He started out as a Bloxburg YouTuber and started posting Bloxburg videos back in 2017, gaining around 143,000 subscribers. And aside from Corruptus, was one of the most well-known developers. A lot of the older items we have in game were created by Froggy, which you can see in the description of them. He's an amazing developer and is responsible for over 600 Bloxburg items, which is insane. And yes, I did have to count. And yes, it did take a long time. His Roblox account was made back in 2011, so he's been on on the platform for a while now. He also created his own game called Blox Tank, which is based off the game show Shark Tank, but this game is sadly private. Overall, Froggy Hops is a really nice guy from my experience. He interacts with the community on Twitter sometimes, and all I can say is that the entire Bloxburg team are all just so lovely. You're gonna hear me say that kind of throughout the video because they're just great, okay? Gliders. In Bloxburg, there's this big giant hill looking thing on one side of the map, and if you look a little closer, there's actually a pathway to climb up to the top. This is because at the very top of the mountain, you can find two gliders that you can actually use to fly around the map. If you go up to them and you click on them, you'll start flying around whilst gradually going downwards, and it's just a little fun activity in the game you can do, but it's also pretty useful to use to like drop yourselves onto the roofs of buildings or plots, and it's also used to get to a secret area which we'll talk about later trophies. Bloxburg actually has a lot of trophies in the game for a bunch of different things and I'm going to show you each trophy we have and how to get it. First up we have the skills trophies. There's 8 skills in the game in total and once you hit level 10 for a skill it'll give you a trophy. However there's actually 9 skills trophies and you'll see why in a second. So we have the intelligence trophy, the cooking trophy, the gaming trophy, the gardening trophy, the writing trophy, the painting trophy, the music trophy, and then two different athletic trophies. This is because last year when we got the gym update, they revamped the athletic skill and the trophy as well, so the original one looks like this and the new one looks like this. If you'd already gotten the athletics level 10 trophy before the revamp, then you got to keep it as a legacy trophy, and then also got the new one as well, so it's pretty rare now you can't actively get this one in game. On another note, we can probably expect all the other skills to be revamped eventually, just like all the jobs. Anyways, the next set of trophies are the trophies you get from working. Once you hit level 50 on each job, you'll get this little plaque thing for that job. In total, there's 12 jobs, so this means 12 trophies, one for each individual job, but once again, we did get a revamp for the fast food burger job, so now that one has a whole new trophy as well, bringing our total up to this section to 13 trophies. And then you can also get a trophy from hitting level 100 for the overall job level, so that's a total of 14 different trophies from jobs. Next, we have the premium trophy, which you can get from buying the premium premium game pass, and then we have a bunch of random trophies from things like visits and streaks, so I'm gonna go over each of those. We have the 30 visits trophy that you'll get from playing the game 30 times, the 100 visits trophy for playing the game 100 times, the 365 visits trophy for playing the game 365 times, the 7 day streak trophy for playing the game 7 days in a row, the 14 day streak trophy for playing the game 14 days in a row, the 30 day streak trophy for playing 30 days in a row, the 1 billion visits trophy that you got if you played around the time the game game hit 1 billion visits, and then the 5 billion visits trophy that you got if you played around the time the game hit 5 billion visits. So that's 9 more random trophies, and next we have event trophies. First up we have the April Fools one, so in 2021 we had that mysterious cube appear which gave you the mysterious cube trophy, then in 2022 we had the Bloxburg School April Fools update which gave you the Bloxburg School trophy, then in 2024 this year we had the burger hunt update thing for April Fools which gave you the burger trophy, next is Halloween trophies, first up is the corn maze trophy plaque which you could get two years in a row in 2022 and 2021 from completing the corn maze. I don't know why I said 2022 first but you know. But then last year we got this Halloween haunting quest trophy from completing the haunted mansion quest. Then we have Christmas trophies which there's actually quite a few and there's like different versions of each so let me explain this one. We have the trophy of cookie completion from the elf hunt in 2020, 2021, 2022 and 2023. So there's four different ones that each have a different year on them and these actually come in different versions versions depending on if you completed the elf hunt on time or if you didn't. So as you can see, mine looked different because in previous years I didn't do the elf hunt on time. Technically, there's two or three versions of each but you can only have one type of each of them. So you can't get both the gold and the platinum for example. Whatever trophy you get, you can only get one version of it. So I'm just counting each one as one trophy as every player can only get one type. If that makes sense, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Anyways, then we also have the Santa's Slay trophy which you could get in 2022 and 2023 for finding Santa's Sakura 
around the map. And then we have two more event trophies from the RB Battles events in 2020 and 2022. The first one back in 2020 was this trophy plaque from completing the RB Battles maze. And then in 2022, we got this trophy cup here from completing another RB Battles maze. And that is all for event trophies. Next, we have the giant seashell trophy, which you can get from finding the giant seashell in the sea. Now, I don't know if this one is technically a trophy, but everyone kind of counts it as one, so I did just want to include it in this section. And this leaves us with only one trophy left to talk about, the lightning trophy. Now, this is the rarest trophy in the game. Well, I'm pretty sure it is anyways, because only a few players have managed to get this trophy. And this is because to get it, you actually need to be hit by lightning inside of Bloxburg, which is extremely rare. That's pretty much the only trophy I don't have in the game, excluding all the job ones. And it's such a cool looking trophy too. But that is every single trophy in the game, which brings us up to a total of 46 Bloxburg trophies currently in the game, which is so many. And make sure you comment down below how many you have. I'm curious. I have around, I don't even know. I have most of them. Bloxy Burger Explosion. Last year in July, we got a revamp of the Bloxy Burger place from this to this. But the devs didn't just simply replace the building in a random update. Oh no, that would be too simple. They decided to blow it up. If you played the game at the time, then you would have seen that what happened was a firework allegedly went the wrong way from the summer fireworks show. And this directly hit the old burger store, resulting in a massive fire that blew it up and left it in a pile of rubble, literally. For a while, all that stood there was this taped off area. And across the road was a little temporary burger band you could actually work at and order food from in the meantime, until we finally got a new updated burger place which was completely revamped with a whole new job system too, which was super cool. But yeah, they did actually decide to blow it up, which was really exciting for players as it felt like such a little fun event at the time. And the devs did a great job coming up with it. I really hope we see kind of more things like this. There was also a bunch of conspiracy on who blew it up and maybe it wasn't an accident, but I guess we'll never know the truth. Elf Hunt. The Elf Hunt is an event we've had every Christmas since 2020 inside of Bloxburg. What happens is each day from around the 9th of December until Christmas Eve, an elf will spawn somewhere around the map and players have to find this elf and give it a specific food. Once you've figured out what food it wants and you give it to the elf, it'll give you money until the final day on Christmas Eve where you get Bloxburgs and the Elf Hunt trophy for that year that we mentioned earlier. The Elf Hunt is so much fun and it's certainly one of the community's favourite events. It's my favourite event ever and last year in 2023, they actually changed the elf hunt slightly so that we had this like big calendar that would give you a clue to each elf's location the day after that elf was added. We also got a little table where each elf would sit and a new character was added called the elder elf who pretty much introduced players to the elf hunt which was super helpful. Also the elves usually look yellow like this but last year we had the addition of some of them being these red angry elves which would actually prank you if you gave it the wrong food so they would play these evil little pranks like turning players into babies, making them really slow or even turning them into Christmas decorations which was very chaotic but super fun. Overall, the Elf Hunt is a really fun event that definitely brings the community together a bit more at the end of each year. And once again, I love it. I just I just think it's so cool. Bloxburg Mums, or Moms if you're American, I guess. But I'm English, so I'm gonna say Mum. Bloxburg Mums are the stereotypical name given to a certain style of Roblox outfit that was considered what typical Bloxburg players would wear. It kind of became a popular phrase during 2020 when UGC items were first becoming a thing and the typical Bloxburg Mum outfit looked a bit like these. I think the most famous Bloxburg mum avatar item was that white bucket hat with a butterfly on it, which was actually made by a Bloxburg YouTuber called French Roses, I found out when researching this video. And also, these white sunglasses were made by another Bloxburg YouTuber, Azira. I'm probably saying that wrong, but these were also incredibly popular and a Bloxburg mum avatar staple of the time. They'd also usually have a pretty simple hairstyle, like these French braid hairs, which were very popular, normally very light colours on their avatar, like white, blue, and pink, and pastels, and a cute robot box face like the super super happy face, squiggle mouth or freckles. Overall, it's pretty much just a name given to that style of outfit because of how common it was to see Bloxburg players wearing them, especially role players dressed like that in the game. But in general, most Bloxburg players don't dress like this. Bloxburg has players with all sorts of different avatars who play and even if someone does use this style of avatar, it's still super cute and very nostalgic of 2020 if I do say so myself. Teasers. Teasers refers to the new version of kind of update leaks we get for Bloxburg since the game got a new development team at the end of 2022. All our update teasers now come in the form of social media posts, mainly on Twitter and Instagram, as well as TikTok, and these come from the official Welcome to Bloxburg social medias that have the username Hey Bloxburg. They usually release short videos or pictures that have a clever caption, and the media itself will have little spoilers of new items or game features. The video ones are especially exciting because they're normally like a little story and you kind of have to like spot new things in the background. It's a super fun way to tease new stuff, and it's really fun getting the community talking and seeing what other 
other people have managed to spot in the background of a video or what they think a new item's gonna be. Cheese. Cheese is a bit of a random entry but I just wanted to include it. If you don't know what I mean by this then basically if you go to BFF supermarket in the town you'll see in some of the fridges there's cheese but you can't actually buy it like it's not a real box bag item. You can click on it and unlike the other fridges in the supermarket no buy option will appear. It's been like this for years now and nobody knows why they just added cheese without the ability to buy it. We did actually get cheese added last year that you can eat but it isn't the same items and we also got another cheese item added for the mouse trap which is just like a square block of cheese on the floor. So we may have cheese but the famous supermarket cheese is still something our avatars will never have the pleasure of eating for the foreseeable future in real life toys. Now a lot of you will probably know this but there's actually Bloxburg themed toys you can buy in real life. Now these were released a year or two ago and the main set you can buy is called Camping Crew which is meant to be themed around the Bloxburg campsite. So this comes with like a bunch of little pieces and figures including Tom. There's also a Mechanic Mayhem set which is from the Mike's Motors job and it has a little figure painting a moped and then you can also just get the figure of Tom too. I think that's all the Bloxburg play sets but if there's any more I missed let me know of course and you can also buy these on Amazon. Item stocking. Bloxburg has a lot of seasonal updates for holidays like Christmas, Halloween, Valentine's Day, New Year's Day and even the 4th of July. Now when they add these updates for the holidays they'll add exclusive themed items like Christmas decorations for example and these are only available whilst that holiday update is in game. Once the season's over the items will then be removed and you can no longer purchase them. However if you had these items on a plot at the time and then the updates removed the items will stay on your plot and you can actually still keep them and use them as well as being being able to put them in your inventory to use on different plots too. Now because of this, players do something called stocking up or item stocking as I wrote it on the iceberg, where they'll add a bunch of seasonal items onto a plot so they can keep them once the update is removed. And you can also do this with seasonal food. You'll see people do it with these massive plots and they'll spend like a million dollars sometimes on just decorations. And this means you can build like a Christmas build before the Christmas updates back. And just in general, some of the seasonal items are useful all year round. So by doing this, it means you can keep them and you can keep on using them. I also I usually make a stocking up video for each update where I give you guys a checklist to stock along with me and make sure you've saved all of the items yourself. So yeah, item stocking just refers to when players save items from the seasonal updates to keep all year round, basically. Emotes. In Bloxburg, if you click on your avatar, an emotes button will appear and if you go into this, there's a bunch of different sections where you'll find a ton of different emotes for your character to use. These are great for role playing and making videos and in general, the emotes are so cute. The devs did a great job on these and it's super fun to look at all the different ones. I think they make the game a lot more realistic when your avatar can actually react to things physically. Also, you can add custom emotes, which pretty much just means any emotes that are on the Roblox platform that you use outside of Bloxburg, you can add the code into Bloxburg and be able to use them in the game. And you do this by using the dresser, going into the customized character menu and kind of typing in the code in there. Traps. Traps refers to the fact a lot of Bloxburg players like to trap other players on their plot. The most common way to do this is by adding a basement on your plot and covering it up with something like a carpet so nobody knows it's there and when they walk over it they'll just like fall straight through into the trap. A lot of people like to put like a rusty jail underneath to jokingly keep players in and you'll see a lot of Bloxburg prank videos online of people doing stuff like this. Beta. The Bloxburg game is or was actually in beta for a very long time. If you don't know what beta means, in terms of games, it basically means a period where the game isn't technically finished, so a lot of games in beta will make it pay to access, just like Bloxburg, is the game isn't classed as fully ready. Bloxburg had beta in its name for years, and it also still has this pop-up when you join the game, but in August of 2020, the word beta in the game title was actually removed. Nobody quite knows why. The game is still paid access though, it costs 25 Robux to play and it always has, and there's a lot of talk in the community about whether it should still say paid access or not, but we also aren't too sure about the beta thing. They never kind of released an announcement saying it was coming out of beta, they just quietly removed the word one day, so who knows what's going on there. Best paying job. Bloxburg of course has 12 jobs currently in the game, and naturally a lot of people who want to get a lot of money wanted to know which job gives you the most. There was a rumour started years ago that pizza delivery gives you the most money, which started making like every single player only work at that job, but this rumour did actually get confirmed multiple times by doing little experiments. For example, I did a conspiracy theory video a couple of years ago where I figured out if this was true or not, and it actually was true. So pizza delivery did make you the most money, but other YouTubers have also done videos about it, including the Panda Girl, who did quite a good one a while ago. Anyways, this was before the revamp of the burger job, and that job now makes you quite a lot of money. So I can't confirm if pizza delivery is still in the lead income wise. We haven't really worked it out since the revamp, so I'm not too sure. But what I can confirm is Bloxburg announced in the kind of information video they did a 
a few weeks ago that this year in a future update all of the jobs income will be kind of equalized which means you'll make the same from every single job meaning you can pick the job you want to do based off which one you have the most fun with instead of which one makes the most money campsite. We actually mentioned the campsite earlier but the campsite is a location in Bloxburg right at the back of the map and it's just a cute little campsite area. There's a few tents and a fire where you can roast marshmallows and this is right next to the big space where event locations usually are like the RB Battles mazes and the Halloween farm. A lot of people aren't that aware of the campsite as it's tucked away up here or they kind of just forget it's a place on the map but it's a super cute location and I can still remember the day it was added with the big map revamp a few years ago so it's fun to visit. Name tags. So in Bloxburg there's a few different name tags you're able to get. Name tags are added onto your avatar's name in chat and above your head in the game. We used to only have the premium and the host name tag but in a recent update we got the ability to choose from a lot more variety so I'm going to show you how to add a name tag on and also all of the new ones and their meanings. So if you click the settings icon and then you go into options you'll see this name tag section here near the top and if you click down on this menu there will be a bunch of different options. So auto means it'll automatically give you your default name tag so that'll either be no name tag, premium or host. Host is the name tag you can get if you own a Bloxburg neighbourhood and if you're in that neighbourhood. So right now you can see mine as host as I'm in my neighbourhood but if I went into someone else's neighbourhood or a public server I wouldn't have the host tag anymore. Premium is a name tag you can get if you have the premium game pass. Non obviously means no name tag so it'll be your default Roblox chat colour as well as no kind of extra name tag next to it. The next ones are all just added ones you can pick from which are just a bit of fun to kind of customise your name a bit more and show other players what you're up to I guess. So we have Landscaper which means a player who likes to build landscapes and gardens, designer which means a player who likes designing things like builds I guess, renovator which means a player who likes to renovate builds, builder which means a player who likes building, noob which means just a noob aka a new player, it's kind of just like that Roblox meme, Bloxburger which is the name for a Bloxburg player so technically we're all Bloxburgers, relative which means like a family relative so this one and the ones I'm about to say are all very roleplay based to use in roleplays so we have child, grandparent and parent and then we also just have roleplayer to show that you're roleplay Playing. And then we have decorator which is kind of like the earlier ones who is a player that just likes decorating. We also have a developer name tag that only the devs of the game get but as of right now these are the only name tags available in the game. Speed builds. Speed builds refer to a style of Bloxburg video usually on YouTube but you can also see them on TikTok and Instagram sometimes. A speed build is a video of someone building in Bloxburg that is sped up and these got really popular I'd say beginning in 2017 slash 2018 and are still popular to this day. YouTubers will post a video of the sped up build for footage as well as a tour of the build and viewers then can use this to copy the build and build it themselves normally by using the YouTube feature to slow the video down and make it a normal speed to be able to copy and yeah it's pretty much just the name of kind of tutorial videos in Bloxburg but to make sure the videos aren't mega long they just speed it up to kind of speed up the process and like I said you have the choice to slow it down to make it easier to reference from breaking glitches. In Bloxburg of course there's usually a lot of different houses and buildings on people's plots and we have a lot of nosy Bloxburg players who might want to go in that build and check it out but they don't know who owns it and they don't have permission to unlock the doors and maybe they're feeling a little mischievous that day so what do they do? They break in, usually by using glitches. The most popular breaking glitch to get into someone's home is to sit down against the wall and then use the shift lock to somehow turn around inside and then stand up again which will just put you in the house but over the years there's been a few rounds random ones that people also used that were then patched. For example, we had one where you could drive up to a wall like in a car, get out of the car and it would put you inside of the house. And also for a short while when you use the bubblegum candy item, you weirdly could just walk through a wall straight after you've eaten it. No idea where that came from but yeah, Bloxburg players always love to glitch into people's plots which is kind of funny. And it's also just a bit of fun to break into places to be honest, I think we've all done it at some point. Bloxburglar. The Bloxburglar is a developer for Bloxburg and his Roblox account was made on the 25th of April last year. His avatar is just this robber type of outfit and I think we're all very familiar with this now as he seems to have made quite a name for himself in the community. His Roblox username is Bloxburglar and his bio says secrets will be uncovered. At first he wasn't shown as a dev, he just happened to be friends with most of the Bloxburg team but towards the end of the year he was added into the development group and the reason he has his own section in the iceberg and all of the other devs don't is because he's not just a normal developer for the game. I mean like I said, he's the Bloxburglar, he's a burglar, 
her. Look at this suspicious outfit. Since the start of his kind of appearance in the community, he uploaded these three decals to his inventory, which were these weird mysterious boards that everyone tried to decipher. And his whole character is just super interesting, it's very mysterious. So a lot of people are very kind of curious about him compared to the other devs because of the kind of storyline he has with all these secret boards and his weird appearances in the community. He's also been mentioned in some teasers and some people suspect that he was the one to blow up the old burger shop that we mentioned earlier. You can also spot him at community events sometimes causing mischief and he also apparently likes to steal plungers so keep those safe I guess. He also has a Twitter you can follow to keep up to date with his suspicious activities and very bizarre tweets. And hopefully we'll see more of Blocks Burglar this year, I'm very interested in the lore behind this. ATMs So we do have a donate feature in game where you can give people money by clicking on them and clicking donate, but you can also do this with the ATMs where you can donate to any player in the server without having to go and find them in the game. There's an ATM outside of Styles, the hair salon, as well as one outside the little gas station right at the top corner of the map, and you can just click on them and select someone in the server to give money to and donate to them as usual. Holiday locations As we've already mentioned a few times in this video, we have seasonal updates for different holidays, which also temporarily add different locations around the map. For Halloween, we have the Plenty of Pumpkins farm and orchard with lots of spooky things to do, as well as this mini Plenty of Pumpkins stand in the town opposite Mike's Motors, and this big graveyard on the big grass area between the town and the mountain. For Christmas, we get Tom's Tree Farm next to the town hall where you can buy Christmas trees and other treats, and we also get this Santa photo station right in front of the town hall where you can take photos with Santa. We have a sledding area where you can sled down the hill behind the town hall, and an ice rink in the grass area between the town and mountains where of course you can ice skate. For New Year's, they decorate the town hall with a big fireworks display and add a countdown on a big screen, as well as Boomer's fireworks tent where you can buy fireworks. For Valentine's Day, we get the Valentine's stand outside a BFF supermarket where you can buy Valentine's treats, and for the 4th of July, we get Boomer's fireworks once again. These are obviously temporary and get removed after that holiday is over, but they're super fun to visit whilst they're in game, and give you kind of a lot more to do around the map. Glitches Over the years, there's been a ton of blocks by glitches and they usually do get patched pretty quickly, but sometimes they're definitely a bit weird and fun to play around with. For example, there was this one a while back where you could actually do this little trick to place items outside of build mode, resulting in people placing random builds throughout the map. I managed to make a little pirate boat on the river and a statue of myself just in the middle of the road. There was also a glitch where you could add objects to this bookshelf door and swing it open into the middle of the road and people would just block the roads up or like make these big walls and gates. I think they also did this with trees for a while too. There's another one where you can place down an inflatable pool, then grab a sled, sit in the sled inside the pool and jump and you just go flying in the air and I had a lot of fun with this one, it still kind of works. So that's just a few examples but we've definitely had some strange glitches over the years and a lot of the time people will record these for videos and post them on YouTube so if you do a bit of digging you can find kind of like loads of different glitches that have got really popular before they've been patched. Some of them are very entertaining I must admit. Free cam. Free cam is a feature that you can use if you own a neighborhood or you have co-owner in someone else's neighborhood that they own. If you click shift and P on your keyboard it removes all of the little tabs on screen and also kind of takes your view out of your avatar so you can kind of fly around as like this invisible camera and look at things. It's so fun to use and it's great for videos or just taking good quality screenshots. You can also zoom in and out and it's just a really good tool to use for content. Bloxburg sold. Now you may have heard me refer to Bloxburg getting a new development team multiple times in this video so far so now it's time to go over over when this happened and when Bloxburg actually got sold. If you don't know what I mean by this, then at the end of 2022, the Bloxburg game and copyright got bought by a company for allegedly $100 million. And when this happened, they also set up a new development team to work on the game as well as our community managers. They pretty much just bought the company that Bloxburg was made under by Queptus and expanded the development team. It gets pretty complicated as it's a lot of legal stuff, so if you want to hear it more in depth, there's multiple videos out there about it as well as one I made two years ago about it. But basically, Bloxburg was bought by a big game making company and is still owned by them to this day. In terms of Coeptors, we don't know if he still works on the game or not. He still has developer of Bloxburg in all of his bios and he owns the Bloxburg development group as well as him being online a lot of the time when game updates happen. Build hacks. Build hacks are a popular thing to create in Bloxburg and you basically make a custom item out of other items in the game. People are really creative with this so I just wanted to go over a few I've seen to kind of give you some examples. Froggy Plays here is a very popular build hack maker over on Twitter and he makes some great hacks like these food items, he's very popular for those. So these are all made out of different Bloxburg items in build mode to kind of look like food. We also have Chaotic who I've seen making really cool looking animals like this cow, 
and these ducks. And these are all once again made out of random build mode items like basic shapes and structural pieces. It's super fun to see people's different build hacks and how they create things in Bloxburg that may not necessarily be existing items. And finally, section two is done. And that is it for part one of the iceberg. Now I'm not gonna make this video any longer because it's already been extremely long, but make sure to keep an eye out for part two and three, which will be a lot more interesting as we will get into the more deeper and unknown facts of Bloxburg. Also, please let me know what you thought of this video as well as any feedback you have for part two and three if you need more visual things or like text on the screen. I don't know, just let me know what you thought. And as usual, a huge thank you to my channel members and my Nitro Boosters. Thank you so much for joining the channel and boosting the server. All their names are on screen now. I love you all. And in general, I love you all so much, Glossheads, and I will see you very soon. XOXO, Glossy Girl. Thank <laughs> you.